What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome to Audio Addiction where you can find the latest album reviews, you can find our band interviews, and you can find live video of the concerts that we get. Um, a lot of awesome shows coming up at the end of this month and March is going to have a lot of awesome shows so I'm really excited for that. Um, so we're going to be getting a lot more video content for you guys and it's gonna, I'm stoked so hopefully you guys are as well. Um, if I sound a little stuffy or a little off, I've been sick for the past two days so i'm kind of feeling a little bit better still kind of stuffy so don't roast me in the comments saying brandon sounds like retarded so um yeah so i figured i'd let you know about that but um if you enjoy what we do make sure to hit that subscribe button also make sure to hit that like button as well it certainly means a lot and it goes a long way so thank you guys so much um but without further ado tonight we're going to be talking about lorna shore's new record flesh coffin So it wasn't too long ago that we actually got to view t interview Tom from Lorna Shore, um, rad dude, rad band, um, and I knew their album was coming out. And um, honestly, I'm gonna preface this with I'm not the biggest deathcore fan in general. Um, I think some bands are really awesome, like Lorna Shore, um, but honestly, I don't really. It's not my cup of tea. Honestly, not saying that is bad, but it's just something that I don't listen to on a daily. So I figured, you know what? Tom's really awesome, dude. Lorna Shore is a really awesome band. I know I just screwed that up, and somebody's gonna roast me for that anyway. But, um, but you know, I wanted to do something different that's out of my comfort zone. So I decided to give a look into their new record, Flesh Coffin. And a lot of my friends have been saying how good it is. So obviously, I wanted to give it the time it deserves. So um, while I was sick, I've been listening to it. So. Um, I kind of wanted to break down each track like I typically do and let you know what my thoughts are on it. Um, so yeah, so we'll move into the first track, which is Offering a Fire. Um, man, this one's one of my favorite tracks um, off the record. There's a lot of favorite tracks, but this one's an awesome one. Um, I like the solo guitar in the intro, um, and then the whole band kind of comes in. I think I always love when bands do that. I again, I'm a guitar player myself, so it's something that I really pick out and really something that I go for every time. Um, so that was really awesome to kind of hear that. Um, again, I like the dark undertones. I don't really listen to a lot of Lorna Shores, but I know a lot of their music kind of has that dark undertone sort of feeling to them. So I'm not really surprised by that. Um, I like that it's heavy, technical, and uh, I think it's a ridiculous rate way to start off the record. Um, speaking that, I haven't really listened to Lorna Shore at all. Um, this is definitely something that's almost like an eye-opener. I think they put out ridiculous stuff. I don't know how long time's been in the band for either, so... Obviously, I'm a, a baby towards this, but, you know, I really enjoy Tom a lot. I think his uh, screams are very diverse. He's got highs, lows, mids, gutturals, anything in between. He's really mu pretty much got it. Um, I think the biggest thing that I pick out um, is just the drumming. It's just insane. Like I said, I'm not the biggest Deathcore fan. Um, not saying I'm not for it. I do like Deathcore. I just don't listen to it a lot. Um, but jumping was nuts um the breakdown was crazy heavy i think a lot of these breakdowns are like blow your pants off crazy um and uh the solo guitar solo on this track was really awesome i think they really mixed in a lot of awesome guitar solos throughout this entire record um but this one's definitely one to be noted as well um and i like how the the guitar actually works really great as well as um they added a lot of um awesome layers into this album like um i wouldn't say they didn't add synths i think they added a lot of like orchestral instruments like strings and they just added this very like um almost it adds a lot of atmosphere to the track, so I really enjoy that, and I think it's just, again, a really menacing way to start off this record, and my only expression that I had for it was holy shit when I first listened to it, and that is definitely an understatement without a doubt, so, um, like, it's literally, like, getting thrown into the deep end of the pool, so, um, the second track, Denounce the Light, um, this was the first single, I believe, 
yeah, it actually was the first single, and it was something that I listened to. I when I was interviewing Tom, it was obviously one of the first tracks that I listened to ever by them, and. At first, for me, it was a little off-putting just because, again, I don't really listen to a lot of Deathcore. So, um, but after listening to it through the album and just listening to it in general, um, I really started to pick out the literally awesome nuances of this band. Um, again, I like the violin and the eerie tones of this track and a lot of these tracks on this record. I think that's something to really point out um, if, you are, if you're like me and are a new fan. Um, that's definitely something to point out. Um, I like that there's breaks um, in between the really insane guitar instrumental parts. Um, I think it, it really just is like a breath of air and then just shove you just back into the water. So um, definitely to me it was just something that was mind blowing to me um, with that breakdown. I literally put that breakdown like, damn, I, I couldn't even speak English because it was so good. Um, but really enjoy that. Um, I think the bridge is killer. Um, again, I really like the different vocal techniques of Tom. I think it's something to note and obviously something that I don't typically hear too much of because, again, there isn't too much variation amongst, you know, metalcore or post-hardcore in terms of screaming vocals, at least for that matter. Um outside of just like lows mids highs not like gutturals or like any crazy shit um so that was definitely something that was different for me and something that i had to get used to but it was really awesome to point out um and then again the drumming technique is just off the chain i that's really the only way to describe it in my book i know it sounds really retarded but that's the only way i can effectively communicate it um and then the lead work on this is really awesome again it's something that i pick out on almost every track but i think again without those lead parts it would feel very bland it wouldn't seem like it fit very well so i really enjoy that um so we'll move on to track number three which is astral wake of time um this has a very ambient sort of glassy leads um in the beginning and then it just gets back into the heavy which i expect from them but i think it all offers a really nice contradiction between their lighter more melodic sort of tones and they're just really brutal heavy in your face shit so i i like that balance and i think it was like the same thing i had uh with the ghost key pretty recently um i i like that combination of the two i just something about where it's like really soft and very like petite versus just really heavy and in your face so i really like that combination too um this track really has some nice bounce to it um really gets grooving and moving um i would definitely say the leads add this sort of darkness and overall uh feel to this track um without a doubt um i think that's obviously uh something that they stress upon in a lot of these tracks but um i like that the um I like that they kind of took a different approach on it. I and in a lot of the tracks off this record, they took a different approach on that as well. So really enjoy that. So we'll move on to track number four, which is Desolate Veil, vale, another one of my favorite tracks. Um, I really think that the string section, um, I think it really kind of backs up the verse very well. I love the layering. I think that's something outside of guitar that I really jo enjoy and pick out when bands add the sort of like nuances to their tracks is really awesome uh the breakdown towards the beginning was really unexpected for me especially upon first listen it came out of left field but so worth it um and the payoff was awesome as well um and then i like the leads um work very well with the rhythm as well i know that that's kind of an obvious thing but I just wanted to point it out. It, I felt like that was something kind of crucial to this track in general. And I like that Tom experimental experimented more with his vocals on this track than a lot of these other tracks. I think that's why it's one of my favorites because he, he kind of went in a different direction vocally for this track. So um, Desolate Veil, vale, those were my thoughts on that one. So we'll move it on to track number five, which is Funeral Moon. This was the second single um that they released um i really like the clean guitar intro this one actually i didn't pay as much attention to as the last one maybe i just just slipped up and didn't check it out um but 
I really like the clean guitars, like I mentioned, and I really like the heavy guitars kind of back that up. Um, I like that play, that, that play between the two. I think that's really awesome. Um, I really like the guitar work on this uh, track um, in particular. Um, again, it's something that I like to point out a lot in a lot of my reviews, but um, definitely the guitar work on this is ridiculous. Um, I think, again, the layering... And I've mentioned this a lot. I think the layering adds a lot of dimension to a lot of these tracks, either being piano, strings, etc. Um, I think they just add this sort of overall feeling to the track, either like, I mean, typically they're more like dark, kind of eerie tones to the track. Um, but I think it's something to point out, especially in Funeral Moon. It has that overall like eerie sort of dark feeling to it. Um, the guitar solo was primo really enjoyed that and um the really the second breakdown just goes super hard um and i really enjoyed that one so we'll move on to track number six which is void um this one's one of my favorites um i really like this sort of reverby uh intro i wouldn't even call it reverby it's like what it's really in the back and they and they kind of pull it forward in terms of so sound wise um i really like that effect i don't know how it's done but i really enjoy that i think that's not a lot of bands do that, but if it's executed very well, I think it can be accomplished well. So that's why I figured I mentioned that. Um, but this track just comes right out the gate, um, just in your face. Um, just the screaming is on point, and I like how fluid Tom is. I I think that um, for me, just being a new listener of Lorna Shore, I think that was something to really uh, point out, and I just like that. Um, just how he how fluid he, he mis, uh, mixes up the different vocals and the different vocal techniques and stuff like that. Um, I think it obviously shows experience and he's been doing it for some time. Um, this one is heavy as shit, without a doubt. Um, I don't know if it's one of the heaviest, but it's definitely up there. If not, one of the it's probably top three heaviest tracks off this record, without a doubt. Um, and this one is again another extremely fast paced track. Um, from an instrumental standpoint, um, it, it's ridiculous. I made this funny antidote that I feel like the drummer has like two two bar by fours for legs because, dear Jesus, he must like literally be blowing out his legs all the time, or not. But still, I mean, like it's ridiculous. His legs must be made of like metal or some shit. So, um, that's something that I pointed out on a lot of these tracks. But I think it's it's crazy how awesome the drum is. I know. A lot of it's, I don't know, I'm, I'm blanking on the word, but um, I know it's I know it's not all completely accurate. It's, you know, it's uh, blast beats, that's the word. Um, but still, it's still incredible. It's still, like, obviously it's still very technically based and stuff like that. So I'm not trying to knock it in any way. It's just something that is just mods, like, it's just insane to me. And just that slow breakdown at the end, whew, that just hits... Hits you like like a freaking ten ton truck. It's ridiculous. So definitely one of my favorites, without a doubt. Like I've said, um, and I would say it's c very close to the heaviest track in my opinion off this record. So um, we'll move it on to track number seven, which is Infernum. Um, again, keeping with the sort of crazy, insanely, massively fast tracks, um, Infernum keeps up with that sort of pace. Um, I like that breakdown. Uh, towards the beginning of the track. I think it's really awesome again I think it's another unexpected sort of breakdown in my opinion It wasn't something that I was just like oh, yeah that breakdowns coming I think they kind of just threw it in there, but it still sounds awesome And um, I think the chorus sounds really huge um, And just obviously with the layering it kind of adds that overall just like Sonic scape to the whole listening experience. So um, really enjoy that. And then I think they also had a really another great guitar solo on this track as well. So we'll move it on to track number eight, which is the Watcher. Um, I really like the guitar intro at the beginning, um, and I, I like how it's like almost on and off at the same time. Um, and so in this track i really enjoyed that um again i like this sort of ambient leads um i feel like that's not as apparent in a lot of these other tracks and that's why i picked it out on this one just because um it's more guitar based as opposed to like layer based 
um, which is really cool. Um, I think they should do more elements of that as well, maybe on top of the laying, which would be ridiculous. Um, and then, again, Tom killing it uh, with the diversity um, in terms of screams. Um, I, I really think he's done an excellent job vocally throughout this entire record. And um, I like the harmonization of screams where he did like a higher, higher uh, level scream and obviously some lower register screams. Um, I think that that is always an awesome pairing, and uh, that's why I enjoyed about The Watcher. So we'll move on to track number nine. We're getting close to the end. Um, this one's called Black Hollow. Um, I like how this track isn't as crazy fast paced as a lot of the other tracks on this record. I think it offers some relief. I know I say that with a joke, but it really is true. A lot of these tracks are just like bum, 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 bum. Not to say that's a bad thing. Obviously, that's why I expect with Deathcore, but I do like some breaks and something where, uh, you know, the instruments kind of kind of speak from themselves. So I really enjoy that one for I enjoy this track for that reason. Um, again, I enjoy the ambiently guitar melodies. Um, I think they really intricately thought of the melodies and really put a lot of good time into it because it certainly sounds like it guitar wise instrument wise i think they really did an awesome job and i like how they experimented with this one i i, I love when bands do that um i think that's something to endear to kind of stray from the norm um without a doubt this one's kind of the black sheep of the entire record but um i think it's in the best way possible i like when bands again go out of their customer comfort zone and do different things um again the layering adds this sort of dimension to the track um that would seem otherwise bland if it wasn't in there so um i really enjoy that and then lastly the breakdown at the end was really awesome <laughs> So lastly, the last track, the title track of the record, Flesh Coffin. I would definitely say this one is uh, my favorite track. I think it's an awesome follow-up to Black Hollow, um, the previous track. Um, I think, again, I, I like the songwriting ability that they can bleed another track into the next track. Um, I think that obviously shows a lot of skill. Um, I like the leads a lot in this track as well. I think it's, again, instrumentally constructed very well um, on... I'll like, like a lot of these tracks on this record I think it was just sonically constructed very well um, I think it has nice breaks and a great full sound and awesome moments to it the breakdown just hits like a freaking truck as usual um, probably my favorite solo off the entire record without a doubt um, it has some really nice moments to this one and I think again culmination wise I think they really added it to it um, the layers are really nice touch I think it fills uh, the gaps of the track and um, I think it's a great way to round out the record without a doubt um, this one feels the most anthematic and just has a great crescendo to it um, and I think uh, it's beautifully composed probably my favorite track off the entire record I feel like um, structurally it sounds the best in terms of instrumentally vocally all that stuff um, I think felt like they were hitting on all cylinders on this track and um i think that kind of speaks for this record in general um so my pros and cons i honestly really don't have any cons but i do have a lot of pros it's something that me while i stepped out of my comfort zone for it i think it was awesome um i think it was something that i again was not expecting to listen to um i wasn't saying i wasn't expecting to get any enjoyment out of it but it was something that just wasn't in my wheelhouse that i will definitely be checking out future stuff from lorna shore um and stuff like that so this was a really awesome album um my overall rating for it would be a 9.1 out of 10 i think it's a really solid record um being a fan not being a fan too much of deathcore i think this one is one to listen to um without a doubt um it's just even if you love like really freaking aggressive heavy tracks um i think this album will just hit nail it home so um let me know in comments if you've heard heard of lorna shore i know there was a few of you who commented on the interview which is awesome shout outs to you guys um again this is not my forte but i figured i'd give it a spin and i, I was really delightfully surprised so congrats to tom and the rest of Lorna Shore, um, you guys are awesome, nice dudes, super awesome dudes. So definitely, if you can, for first week sales mean a lot. So if you can pick it up, definitely go pick it up, go support Lorna Shore. I certainly did. So um, 
really stoked on that and uh yeah so with that being said again my name is brandon if you enjoy what i do make sure to hit that subscribe button also make sure to hit that like button as well and make sure to let me know in the comments about that also if you really enjoy what we do we have a merch store pick up a shirt that would certainly mean the world to us so um if you want to support us in that way that would be certainly awesome so thank you guys for checking out the review again my name is brandon and we'll be talking with you soon deuces hey guys hope you enjoyed the video uh thanks for watching of course uh if you enjoy what we do make sure to go check out the other series we do we do album reviews we do band interviews and we do live videos so definitely go check that out um, hit that subscribe button, it really helps our channel, helps us grow. Make sure to hit that like button as well. Uh, go follow us on social media, that's all down below. We try to keep that as updated as possible. We also made a new website where we'll be posting photos of upcoming concerts and stuff like that, which you can go check out at audioaddictionmedia.com and come get your fix with us, guys. Talk to you later. Deuces!